Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today, we're talking revenge. Man, it feels good to be able to say that fully again. I am so excited to be here. Guys, we're kind of wrapping up this book. I'm going to be covering chapter 36, Jigsaw, and we'll get into chapter 37, Netflix. And I think there's probably, after this, an hour left of the audiobook, so I probably have one or two more episodes left. I can't remember exactly what happens. So we'll get into that, and then we'll jump over to Cordia's. So go ahead, get your copy ready to go. I'm sure you've been reading it. And hey, this is where I need your help. Leave me comments. I've had a lot of people say Cordia's is really boring, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I'll do maybe an overview of, I haven't started it yet, so I'm going to jump in, start reading it, give you an overview of the parts that I'm learning about, and then just get to the good stuff on Harold and Fraud, you know, get into Hank and Skank, get into the dumb prince and his stupid wife, to quote South Park. Um, I'd kind of like to just jump into those chapters, I think. But I'm also up for a full-on recap, if that's what you guys want to do, just leave me comments. But if it really is boring, I'm thinking, let's just kind of get an overview of the book, get into the juicy stuff. That's kind of what we're here for, right? Okay. Without further ado, I do want to give a shout out to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Real Housewives Recaps. Guys, we're having so much fun over there. Jay and I keep recording these uncensored sessions, and you guys have been so funny in the comments over there, just giving your uncensored take on all this, because we don't have to worry about swearing and stuff over there. Um, so we have been <laughs> and really letting it loose on these two. We watched the entire South Park episode and just had a blast doing it. So you'll be able to find all that over there. Check that out. A huge thank you to my executive producers, who I will be shouting out at the end of this video. Thank you for being here and supporting. All right, let's get into Revenge, the dumb prince and his stupid wife. I'll never not think that's funny, by the way. All right, Jigsaw. So he calls it Jigsaw because immediately he starts discussing Megan's team was tasked with slotting the pieces of her compassion, her victimhood, um, fake news, racism, feminism, motherhood. Each piece of the Jigsaw was meant to illustrate Megan's suffering. Ugh. I'm going to have to take some major anti-nausea medicine for this part of the book because it really made me feel queasy because it's all about that. They want you to know how much poor Migpoo has suffered. I'm going to get into it, but I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead and tell you when I get into the part about bullying the staff and then her answer to it is, I couldn't have bullied them. I myself am the victim of bullying. I just want, I just, I, I want to throw up. I want to throw up on my table and I hate talking about gross stuff like that, but I'm telling you, it made me nauseous. <laughs> If you could see me right now, I'm I'm like holding back, you know what? Oh, it's so gross. They are disgusting. And it's like, there's times where I just think they're annoying, but then I remember, oh no, they're truly terrible human beings. And we'll, we'll get into all the whys. We already know all the whys, but we'll get into more of the whys as we continue reading. But she was advocating, get ready to laugh, quote, stop the hate for profit. Okay. Mm hmm. Uh, what would you say you guys didn't spare in every interview since you've left? Hmm. Hate for profit. Interesting. Yeah. Again, the rules don't apply to them. So, right after, let's see, I'm jumping around, but right after they had left, she started doing these speeches, right? That her slogan was build compassion around the world. And that's interesting because she doesn't have any compassion for those around her, such as her father. Megan was invited to speak at this most powerful women's summit. You guys, it was a virtual summit in 2020. The cost, well, I'm glad you asked, $2,426 a piece. Who is going to the stupid thing? Megan was featured in the, quote, courageous leadership section. I mean... What is happening here? Just a bunch of rich people who are sheep? What's what's going on? Who's going to try to learn anything from, from her? That's just disgusting. She described herself as, quote, the most trolled person in the entire world, it, um, referring back to 2019. But, oh my God. Again, it's all about being a victim while victimizing other people. It's just disgusting. And, and 
I think my old saying fits. And if you're new here, you'll not get this. But if you've been with me, you'll understand it's a load of pants. This is a load of pants. This is more than a load of pants. This is making me nauseous. Seriously. <sighs> she contradicted herself. What else is new? By talking about the hate toward her online. But remember, she had claimed that she doesn't read any of that stuff, you guys. She doesn't read social media. Remember, I played the condescending clip a few episodes ago. Go back and find that if you didn't watch it. It will, again, invoke a gag reflex. But she had, yeah, previously declared, I don't know what's helpful. I, God, I'm mixing up her words because I'm, I'm going cross-eyed because I'm nauseous. No, she said, I don't know what's out there. And that's helpful for me not to know. Okay. She was still posting as, quote, the Duchess of Sussex. What else is new? She will not let go of that title. She sure hates everything to do with the royal family, but she sure loves that title. While trying to commiserate with others suffering during lockdown, she was still signing off as the Duchess of Sussex. Ugh. I mean, the lack of self-awareness. She started endorsing political parties, which is something that the royals do not do. They don't get into politics. During this time, they were working on their Spotify deal, which they, Tom Bauer had estimated they made between 18 and $30 million on a Spotify deal. Uh, didn't that guy, didn't the Spotify guy come out since then and say he spent too much? I think he included a couple people in that, but they were one of them that he spent too much on the uh, Spotify deal, which I kind of love if he said that. Netflix, they are estimated to earn around $100 million. Now, it's easy to hear numbers like that, and, and that number is disgusting. I'm not trying to downplay that. But then think about, you know, all the people they had to split the money with. But they still walked away with a huge chunk of change there. Jeez. I just, I think I get so frustrated for so many reasons. The bullying thing is just the worst to me. The way that she treated staff. The way that it's come out that she's spoken to people and the way we've seen her through everything from body language to just clips of her treating people is so disgusting to me. It really, it does, it makes me, I have a visceral reaction to it and the holier than thou, I think of the two of them just really disgusts me. And then the, the other thing, and this is where I get hung up on these numbers. It's not that I dislike rich people. Hey, I wish I was one of them, you know, <laughs> bring it on. But I think all the good that you could do if you were, you know, given a platform like that or given huge sums of money like that. But nah, not these two. They'll just keep preaching on their victimhood and whatever else they're peddling at the time. So during this time, William and the Queen were working hard and making appearances together and trying to help during the COVID situation. Bauer is saying behind the scenes, Harry was fuming about this. Harry had this idea to lay some wreaths down for fallen soldiers, but in doing so, he made sure that photography was there and that the photos were distributed and circulated to show that he is still, what's the word? He's still relevant. He's still... He hasn't abandoned his royalty. Okay. Megan at this time was supporting cancel culture. It's a whole thing. She was for the censorship of certain people that she opposed on Twitter. And again, it's funny how she doesn't want to be canceled, but she sure doesn't mind canceling everybody else. All right. So also during this time, Christmas rolled around and they decided, well, who should we spend Christmas with since we isolated ourselves from both families and cut them all off? We don't need those people. Let's spend it with David Foster and Catherine McPhee. I'm sorry. Can you think of a more insufferable group of people? Because I can't. That sounds awful. So during this time, Megan and Oprah were closer than ever scratching each other's backs. They were priming for this interview. Oprah was repeating claims of Megan's victimhood. It was these claims that made her ideal for Oprah, who some say might uh, exploit people who have been victims of certain things. Just saying. Okay, so then we get into chapter 37, Netflix. So right off the bat in this chapter, we're hit with the story of Harry appearing on James Corden's show. And I cannot stand James Corden. Lump him right in there with Jamila Jamil is some of the most obnoxious people ever. But of course he's friends with Harry and Meghan. But um, a really funny thing is, according to Tom Bauer, 
Follow me here. According to Tom Bauer, according to a producer that worked with James Corden, um, Harry had pestered Corden to appear. And that's how that interview came about. I just find that very funny. Of course he did. Of course he wanted to try to stay relevant and appear on TV. And I'll tell you honestly, I watched it. Even though I can't stand Corden, I thought, oh, it might be funny. Who knows? We'll try it. I just, I just remember thinking, God, he has no personality at all. He just came off as unlikable. I don't know. Unrelatable something. Not friendly, not personable, not charismatic. I don't know. Whatever the opposite of all those things. Is. Prince Harry, that's what he came off as. During this, he ended up praising the crown. So think about this. Okay. He's praising the crown, who notoriously had, and I know people like the crown. I don't care. Like the crown, don't like the crown, don't admire me. It's kind of been a thing, right, where they've kind of gone after the royal family a little bit, and um, he's praising them, but bear in mind, he's praising them on James Corden, you know, a national show, all these people watch. He was, during this time, contracted to Netflix. So, of course, he's going to, you know, it's all about kissing each other's asses. So, of course, he's going to do that with Netflix. And so this broadcast of this James Corden thing aired on February 21st, the same night that Prince Philip was going back into hospital. They, you know, it was near the end of his time. And, of course, no mention of that. Prince Harry all about himself. Also, on this night, the Queen was on TV discussing COVID and, you know, trying to help people. But, nope. There's Harry riding on a double-decker bus. I don't know, being silly and drinking tea, whatever. Okay, and then around this time, they also did their first Archwell podcast. They would do anything to capture attention. I didn't actually listen. Did I do the first one? I may have. I can't even remember now. Good Lord. We reacted to a couple of the podcast um, parts on our Patreon, and it was just the most nonsensical drivel she would not let the guests speak it was all about these weird platitudes and pre-rehearsed stories and it was just nothing to it nothing personable again no charisma no charm nothing so to capture attention during things like the podcast they would disclose things about themselves including their pregnancy reveal um and having little archie come on the mic and saying isn't it fun you know that sort of thing but to quote Piers Morgan, they quit the country for privacy, but they haven't shut up since. During this time, this is where things get really rough. Okay. Megan was handed victory in her court case against uh, the Mail on Sunday. The judge determined she was not subject to cross-examination. It was Judge Warby. And he refused to hear from the palace employees on any of this. He decided that the newspaper's evidence was irrelevant and that the newspaper had breached her privacy. Quote, her letter was a from a distressed daughter and it was private. Even though Megan knew that it would be leaked out and leaked out parts of it herself, you know, oh God. You know, I it just makes me sick. It, I mean, I don't know if you guys followed the whole Johnny Depp thing and that whole miscarriage of justice over in the UK. I just, I, I would say it goes right along with that. It's just, and believe me, America has huge issues. I'm not at all saying we're above shit like that, but oh, it's just frustrating to hear. It's just awful. So after this, um, the press started saying, well, the judge's decision was a dream come true for, for a powerful couple wishing to escape scrutiny. Megan put out a statement saying, we've all won. You can't take someone's privacy and exploit it. Okay, think about that. You can't take someone's privacy and exploit it. What have they done since they left? Think about the book Spare, where they published supposed text messages between like her and Catherine. That's not, isn't that what they're doing? Is exploiting people's privacy for money? That's exactly what they're doing. But yet if it's, you know... According to them, if it's done to them, then that's not okay. As long as they're the ones doing it, they're fine with that. Then she went on to say the public was owed reliable fact-checked check news. Well, again, I say, what about all the ridiculous statements that have been proven false that these two have put out, including during the court case having to apologize for lies she told? Especially, like talking about her claiming not to have helped with finding freedom. Then we go over to the Oprah interview. So they're getting ready for the Oprah interview. They had weeks leading up to it 
where Megan's lines were, quote, written, rewritten, and rehearsed. So she knew when to hesitate. This is all according to Tom Bauer. She knew how to portray reluctance. She knew how to bash the royals, but pretend like she wasn't. She had it all down to a science. The interview lasted three hours and 20 minutes. Harry was included after two hours. So it was during this interview they revealed that their baby was a girl. Ugh, just nauseating. Again, Patreon, we reacted to that as well. We're still going through it, but ugh, just so hard to watch. Just so one-sided and, again, disgusting. I mean, it, it really is. Nothing but lies and, you know, defamatory statements about the royal family and the members of it. But, again, you know, they go back to, they're the victims. They're the victims in all this. They can't possibly be the awful ones. They're the victims. So after this, the queen decided Harry and Meghan should resign from their royal patronages and that Harry would lose his military titles. But since he was born a prince, he got to keep that title. Ugh, that's the thing that irks me the most. I love the queen. I'm not second guessing her, but I'm just asking in general, why? Why do they get to keep their titles? I just, oh, I wish that would go away so much. I just don't think that they're earned or deserved, especially after everything they've done. So the palace put out a statement basically saying what was going on. Well, the Sussexes, of course, had to fight back through statements, <clears throat> Megan, um, and their statements went up as fin Philip was reentering the hospital. Again, no regard for that or what the queen was going through. It's all about themselves. 3rd of March rolls around. And it was during this time that the Times rep reported allegations of Megan's bullying. So this was the Jason Knopf report that it started to come out in the Times. They talk about these um, unnamed sources and that all these assistants were resigning and some of them were losing self-confidence, couldn't stop shaking, all the stories we've heard. They go into it in this part of the book that they were operating in a climate of fear and that the assistants were routinely humiliated in front of their peers. So again, this is at the hands of both Harold and Fraud. So Harry and Meghan were both doing this to the people that worked with them. Their team that they claimed not to have, right? They had no help. But um, it's just awful. And it, it's, I mean, it just shows how truly awful, I gotta find a new word for awful, how terrible these people are. How terrible Harold and Meghan are. Just terrible people who who just treat people. I just don't understand how you treat people like that. How do you lose? How does it ever become okay to treat people like that? It's not. It's not. But again, these allegations of bullying come out and Meghan's go-to is, no, I was bullied. They, instead of addressing it, they spin it around and say, no, the palace, they're they're saying this. It's a malicious attack from the palace, but they themselves are the, quote, innocent victims. You guys, I cannot with these two. So here's where I get frustrated with the palace. You know, I'm very pro-royal, but I don't understand why the palace was so slow to investigate this. And it's so frustrating because Megan's whole thing is the palace never protected me. But when she's accused of something truly heinous, like treating people like this, the palace protected her. And I wish like hell they would let those people out of their NDAs. I really do. So they protected Megan. There is a quote here by Tom Bauer that says, those concerned, meaning the people that worked in the palace with them, uh, with Harold, Harry and Megan, or, those concerned are fed up with the hypocrisy of it all, that the Sussexes were being bullied and forced out when others were experiencing that treatment at their hands. So that's exactly what I'm saying. That's the most frustrating part. Can you imagine you've been treated this way? The people that were treating you like this go on to say they're the ones that were bullied and sent out of the UK or whatever bullshit they're peddling this week. Megan's lawyers um, had a week's notice of the time story coming out and the Sussexes could produce no legal grounds to prevent its publication. Hmm. Almost like it's uh, true or something. So Megan's response was to put out a statement that says, let's call this what it is, a calculated smear campaign 
based on misleading and harmful misinformation. So again, nothing's ever their fault. Things were only done to them, not the other way around. They blamed Buckingham Palace for giving credibility to the story. She called herself the victim of bullying. You guys, I cannot. I feel like my head is going to explode. Explode. I hate the word gaslighting, but it so fits here. They're gaslighting all of us. We know what happened. And you're saying that, oh, no, you couldn't have done it because you're a bully. Oh, okay, great. That's how that works. Harry and Meghan had convinced themselves that William was responsible for the leak. What about, wouldn't it be Knopf or one of his team members that leaked this most likely? But no, they they convinced themselves it was William. You know what? I don't care if it was William. I kind of hope it was. But <laughs> I don't care who it was. There's a story there, right? It got out and they're just mad that it got out. But they spend everything to make themselves look like the victim. During this time, the palace had hired a new team of lawyers to investigate the bullying claims. And again, this is where I get frustrated with the palace. Let those people out of their NDAs. Let's talk. I want to know what they have to say. Also, during this time, Megan had her friends release statements on her behalf saying, what a good person she is. You know who released those statements? People from Suits. She doesn't have any actual friends, so she has to go back to the people she worked with on Suits. And they blame things like misogyny and racism and all the other isms that we've talked about, sexism, all that stuff. Let's see. They called the royal family archaic. They were, quote, forced to flee the UK. Not that they burned bridges and ran. It's that they were forced to flee. God, everything is spun as them being the victim. Uh, They talked about the royal family, quote, outliving its relevance. And again, asshole Harry is just... Along for the ride. Yep, that's my family, but uh, you're right. That's that's all true. I'm going to go along with all that. And yet, in the same breath, in the book spare, but I, but I, love, my, I love my brother. <laughs> okay. You have a really weird way of showing it. You seem to show your love the same way Megan does. Imagine that. Uh, Serena Williams, Katy Perry, Orlando Bloom, all neighbors of Harry and Megan. Imagine that. They're all speaking out, too. Huh. Weird, huh? It's almost like they're all in this together. Um, Megan's lawyers didn't go after a defamation claim against the time. Almost like it could be true. (sighs) And that's where I'm ending this because I'm so mad and I'm so frustrated and I hate these people so much. So I'm ending it here because we only have, I think, an hour left in the audiobook. We'll get through it and finish up these recaps and we'll jump into Cordia's. I gotta think of a fun way to say that. Cordia, something like that. I don't know. Cordia sounds so much more regal. So I think I have to be more regal and talk like Lady C or something. I don't know. I'll have to give it some thought. But guys, uh, let me know in the comments. I know you got to be frustrated too. It's. I think this is what keeps me fascinated by these two. It's just the hypocrisy of all of it. They're deranged, right? I mean, it's like sociopathic shit, right? I mean, (laughs) it's just wild. Absolutely crazy. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for sticking with me. I really appreciate it. You guys are the greatest. Thank you for all the love and support. And thank you to, I encourage you to check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Real Housewives Recaps. I want to say a huge thank you to my executive producers. And if you're like, hey, Jen, what's an executive producer? Well, you can find it on patreon.com. So I want to say a huge thank you to Kristen, Linda, Melissa, Paige, Teresa, Mary, Amy, uh, Mr. K, K, Shauna, Brown Eyed, oh, sorry, Brenda. I still want to call you Brown Eyed Girl. Um, Aaron and Frank, Kristen, Ann, Amanda, Ann H, Karen, Corey, K King, Glenn, Sugar Hiccup, Karen, and Dewey. And if you're recently joined the $10 tier, I will get you in a shout out very soon. Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate it. Check out my merch. I still got Recollections May Vary. I can't believe how well that's sold. That makes me so happy. I'm thrilled. I have a bunch of it myself and I love it. I think it turned out so cute. I'm so thrilled with it. But thank you guys so much for all the love and support. I could not do this without you. Um, Again, if you're new here, make sure you're subscribed. I'm going to Coronation. I'm so excited. I got a huge plan for that. I'll be bringing lots of coverage from that. I can't wait. 
yeah, thanks for sticking with me. And uh, thanks for sticking with me through revenge. I can't wait to get into courtiers. <laughs> I don't know why. I feel like I want to say it like that, like courtiers. Like, um, I don't know, sense and sensibility style or something. But anyway, guys, thanks for sticking with me. I can't wait to get into the next episode. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Don't be an asshole like Harry and Megan. You know what? I know you. You wouldn't be. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>